Good morning and welcome to our Parish Eucharist on this, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. It's good to be with you and good that we can worship God together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gifts, Go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Collect for this twelfth Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. O God, whose word burns like a fire within us, grant us a bold and faithful spirit, that in your strength we may be unafraid to speak your word and follow where you lead. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. 
and I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. A reading from Romans chapter 12 from verse 9. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying God forbid it Lord this must never happen to you but he turned and said to Peter get behind me Satan you are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
The cross of Christ, central to our Christian faith. The cross shows us the love of God, shows us how much he cared for us in sending Jesus to die for us so that we can have that special relationship with him, so that we can be forgiven and live each day afresh and anew. Sometimes we can forget the importance of the cross for our Christian faith. We see around us many depictions of the cross, some with Jesus still there, some empty, showing the good news that Jesus is risen. The cross used, is used much in jewellery by Christians and non-Christians alike. There's a story of the person going in to buy a cross on a chain and saying, have you got one with the little man on it? In our Gospel reading, Jesus speaks much about his forthcoming suffering and death and then goes on to speak of the disciples carrying their cross. The disciples had been asked by Jesus earlier who they thought he was, and they said, well, he's a prophet. But Peter declared that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the Holy One. Yes, the Messiah, the one promised, the one to come and redeem the world. Jesus was the one everyone was waiting for. And it must have been a wonderful moment for the disciples. Nothing could ever be the same. But Jesus didn't let them glory in that moment for too long. And here we have him speaking of the suffering to come. But Peter would have none of it. I love the disciple Peter, so human, and the one who said what others might want to say, but didn't dare. He was the one who walked on the water to Jesus, the one who denied him. The disciple who said, but we've given up everything, what about us? And now here he berates Jesus. He couldn't believe that Jesus, the Messiah, the Holy One, was to suffer and die. He wanted Jesus to be the leader, to save them from the Roman rule, as many had thought he would. Jesus' response to Peter sounds quite hard. Get thee behind me, Satan. But perhaps Jesus needed all the support he could get for this terrible journey he was going on. And then the difficult part, that they must each carry their own cross. I wonder what it means to each one of us to follow Jesus, Jesus' invitation to carry the cross. It does sound a bit daunting. Some think it, it means that God has given us a trial to bear throughout our lives, a bit like St Paul's thorn in the flesh that he begs God to take away from him. To some, it means that God is giving us challenges to test us, to see how we deal with the difficulty in front of us. To some, it means that God uses the trials we go through to see how we bear up under the strain. To me, none of these sounds like the loving God that we know. The reality is that in life, we do have pain and suffering. So when Jesus asks us to take up our crosses, it's not because he gives us pain and suffering, but because he knows we'll have it. But he's there in it with us, and sometimes shines a light in the midst of the darkness. Through the cross of Christ, we can bear our own pain, our own crosses, knowing that Jesus understands and is with us in it. And sometimes through the pain, there's resurrection and new life. Sometimes we see glimpses of Christ's light. Sometimes this pain is with us throughout our lives, but Christ is there with us in it, understanding and helping us through, giving the strength we need. In his book, The Seven Story Mountain, Thomas Merton, who's, who was a theologian and Trappist monk, describes our souls as potentially lucid crystals left in the darkness. But when the light shines on these crystals, when God's love shines on our souls, they become transformed. Haven't we seen that happening through this very painful time of COVID-19? People's natures transformed, their capacity for love transfigured. And as we each carry our own crosses, God transforms our souls, our spirits, to give us more capacity for love and kindness. And when we go through pain, 
we can identify so much more with people, others in pain. When we're in pain, we see how kind and loving others can be. As we carry our crosses, as we walk with Jesus through the pain, God transforms us and gives us the strength to get through and helps us sometimes to see his light. We also learn much about God through our suffering. When things are going well, we can often leave God behind, say, thanks very much, but everything's going fine, thank you, we don't need you. Often, only when we suffer do we call out to God, do we realise that we actually desperately need him and our own strength is not sufficient. That's when we know we can't rely on ourselves alone and we know our need of him. And as we call out to him, we receive the strength that we need and often we receive the peace that passes all understanding. In our reading from Romans, we have the verse, Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Ours is to know the hope we have in Christ to bear the suffering our cross with Jesus and to continue to pray and speak to the Lord about it and to be real about how we feel in it, as David is many times in the Psalms. Jeremiah, the prophet, had a very hard life, passing on God's difficult words to those who did not want to hear and being blamed for them, the messenger being blamed. His prophetic calling was the cross he had to bear. And he was very real to God about how he felt, as in our reading today. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that never fail, that always fail. We can be real with God through our suffering and pain. And we can know that he hears and loves us and has compassion on us. Let's ask our loving God, our loving Heavenly Father, to continue enabling us to carry whatever each of us is going through and ask him to transform us and to shine his light on us so that we can be a transformed, loving people to walk with others as they carry theirs. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the church as it seeks to respond to God's calling to live in genuine love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all who inspire us through their gifts of time and energy given in different and imaginative ways, and for those who help us to grow as disciples. We look forward in hope to that time when St Paul's church building, like St Matthew's, will again become a place of worship and togetherness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those caught up in tragic and terrible events in different parts of the world, remembering the people of Lebanon and people in India whose lives have been devastated by the consequences of the monsoon season. We pray for people in positions of leadership in all the countries of the world, that they may be inspired to work together to find more effective crisis responses and prevention strategies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our local community. We pray for those whose livelihood is precarious, for those who suffer domestic abuse, for those rough sleepers who are re-emerging on our streets. At this time, we pray also for those who are returning to preschool, to school, to colleges and to universities. 
give wisdom and patience to students and teachers alike as they seek out new ways of working and learning that mean that teaching and education can be safe as well as constructive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for those whose lives are weighed down by isolation, loneliness and suffering. We pray for all who are housebound, in care home settings or in sheltered accommodation. We pray for those who care and for those who are cared for. We remember those for whom our prayers are asked. Baby Emily, Jean Gardner, Bob Harland, Anna Johnson, Philippa Leclerc, Patricia Watts, David Wilson, and also Caroline Behan, William Buncombe, Vera Edwards, Julia Jones, Kate Morgan, Jane Seal, Brett Tribe, and Vera Wilnecker. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those who have died in recent weeks and for those who are bereaved. We ask that your saving and unconditional love will give strength to those who grieve and deliverance from despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, in this week to come, may we be grateful for moments of joyfulness and genuine love. And when we encounter moments of insecurity and uncertainty, may your wisdom enlighten us, guide us and transform us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in Christ's name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So we share the peace with each other, if we are with others, if we're on our own, I share the peace with you.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed be your holy name, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. For you have revealed yourself to be the only, the eternal, the great I am. From the flames of the burning bush, you anointed Moses to lead your people out of hardship and bondage to the land of promise. In the fire of the prophets, you spoke of a day when every sin and sorrow would be burned away and all the earth would be ablaze with your glory. In the fullness of time, you revealed your way of overcoming evil in the crucible of your son's passion and death. Through his resurrection, you proclaimed once again that you are the great I am for all generations. And so we give you thanks with your church on earth and all the company of heaven as we join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, as you made the earth beneath Moses' feet into holy ground, sanctify this meal to bring us into your sacred presence. As we remember your Son's saving mercies, send down your Spirit to anoint your church for ministry. By that same Spirit, bless this bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sending God, who commissioned Moses for a purpose beyond his comprehension, send forth your church with an imagination shaped for your kingdom. Give your disciples grace to bless those who persecute them, to be patient in suffering, to persevere in prayer, and to rejoice in hope. Stretch every heart to find life in you by losing it and strengthen your people with courage and wisdom to take up their cross and follow your Son. Make your people on earth ready for a purpose beyond our imagining, a life beyond our deserving, a glory beyond our reckoning, until your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, and you bring us with the saints onto eternal holy ground, aflame with your love, most Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. 
to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this time receive you sacramentally together, come into our hearts. We embrace you, knowing you are already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ which I receive for all. the blood of Christ, shed for us all. Let us pray. God, of all mercy, in this Eucharist, you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all those you love, your families, friends, and all those working in the NHS, and those who suffer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be wherever you are, and wherever you may go this week, safely and faithfully. In the name of Christ. Amen.